Happy for you to be here. Um, you can feel at home. We're gonna um, do some songs today. I'm gonna go get a book. One of eight grace go great gospel songs and hymns.
page is our youth service. It's fifth Sunday and we let our youth have charge of this service and they've been teaching Sunday school, been in Sunday school this morning, uh, teaching the adults and the other classes and uh, so we're, we're thankful for our youth here at Harmony and so this is a service and a day that they get to lead the church service and do the church service. So in just a moment they'll be coming up with announcements but for those of you visiting today, thank you for being here. Restrooms are down the hallway, kitchens on through the set of glass doors, make yourself at home. Uh, you can get to the restroom by staying against this wall, or you can go around and come in through the glass doors and the breezeway, whichever way you feel more comfortable. If you need water and stuff, there's some in the kitchen, in the refrigerator, make yourself at home. But we thank you for being here and just uh, in, ask you to enjoy today. Later, after the announcements, after the choir and after the specials, we've got a special guest with us today, Brother Brady Holbrook will be coming to bring the message, and we're excited about that. He was here with us a couple of nights during revival, and he stayed right in, didn't run off. So uh, he was willing to come today and, and uh, preach the word for us. So we love him. We got to watch him grow up at Silver City as we were preaching and starting out. We got to watch him grow through the youth and see him grow and turn into a fine young man. So we're excited about that today. Uh, but we'll turn it back over to you. Just wanted to welcome everybody, make you feel at home, and thank you for being here today. Welcome to Harmony Baptist Church, Sunday, July 30th, 2023. Sunday school at 10, worship service at 11. Wednesday, dinner and activities are on a break for summer and will resume after Labor Day. Saturday, August the 12th, Daughters of the King, Little Ladies Conference, Girls Ages 5 through 13. Saturday, September the 9th, Harmony Women's Conference. Saturday, October 21st, Harmony Car Show and Barbecue. Saturday, November 11th, Harmony Seniors Dinner hosted by Vertical Students. Please sign up online for any upcoming events at hbcdawson.com. If you're interested in serving any church position this coming year, please stay after the service today for a quick meeting. Uh, remember those on the prayer list, family of Deborah Collins, and you can read the bottom on for Harmony Baptist Women's Conference. Have any desire to serve in any way, shape, or form, and that way you're not going to run from one. We know life is crazy, but we know sometimes everybody just needs a break. So our goal is to have four people with each age group, and that way you can rotate on and off every few weeks, but that we have some consistency with the kids. So if
fire to help serve in that area. Please stay after church so we can get stuff situated and ready to go for that. I wanted to add, too, for the Little Ladies Conference that's coming up August 12th, we've extended the registration to today. It was Friday, so we got a little extra time. Please sign those little girls up from ages 5 to 13. It's on August 12th. It's $15 for registration, which includes a t-shirt and a lunch. So if you have any questions, please let me know. The registration is on the Facebook page. Any other announcements?
is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. You can wipe away the tears from broken dreams. Wasted years until the past had disappeared. Oh, let me tell you about my Jesus and all the wrong turns that you would go and undo if you could. Who can work it all for your own good? Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sin.
Good morning. How in the world a man is supposed to follow that, I do not know. I have no idea. I'll be honest with you. Never in my Bible once do I read, not once, where Jesus said, get these kids away from me, I don't want them anywhere near me. No. He said, bring them in. Let me see them. I want to love on them. Tina said earlier, she said, I'm sorry we're having you service, or she didn't say I'm sorry, she said, we're having you service this morning, I'm sorry if it's a little chaotic. Don't apologize for that. What you might see is chaos. Let me, let me explain to you that. You've heard it before. Preachers have said it again and again. That's life in a church. That's a generation coming up. They're going to be the next leaders. They're going to be the people that stand up and sing. They're already standing up and singing. They're requesting songs. They're already working in the church. And praise God for that. I know you're proud of them. As we get into this hour... Scripture that's been laid on our heart comes out of Exodus and comes out of chapter 3. As you turn there, Dwayne Spicer, I, I'd ask you if you'd lead us to the Lord in prayer. Good morning, Heavenly Father, God, it's such a blessing, Lord, already to be in your house. God, be amongst your people. God, it's good. It's Lord, it's sweet to feel that spirit already. God, I thank you for these children. God, I thank you for their boldness to stand up, to sing, and to play instruments. God, I know you touch their mouths, you touch their hearts, you touch their hands. God, I pray that you continue blessing them, God. Lord, that they will be those the light of the future, God, and the light even now, God. Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for what we felt. But God, as we now come to the hour, well, God, we're able to receive that about a word. Lord, we, take, we pray that you just take Brother uh, Brady, Lord, and use him and bless him, God, in a mighty and bold way. God, we open our hearts and open our minds and be receptive of thy word and thy spirit. And God, I pray that there be one here lost this morning. God, that don't know the joy that we felt, that they come to know it uh, before it's everlasting too late by accepting Jesus Christ as their Savior. For these things we ask in Jesus' name, amen. amen. It's been said, I don't have to say it again, to welcome you out to this house this morning. You're home. If you're a child of the King, doesn't matter if you call Harmony Baptist Church your home, you're home. And if you're a visitor, I'm glad to tell you that you are not in a strange and unfamiliar land filled with warring and strife. And unrest. No, you're in the house of a good, good father. Of one who loves you this morning. And if you don't know him, he wants to know you. We thought about Moses as Tony called us and trying to decide or trying to find what the Lord might have us to bring. We kept thinking about Moses. A great leader who wrote the early part of the Bible. What was then... All they had, all they had was this story. All they had was a belief, a faith on what their fathers had told them. They were looking for something to come. These people in Moses' time, they were looking for not just what would come eons down the road. They were looking right now to be let out of Egypt. They were in bondage. Moses was one of the children. He was, he was a child of he was a child of the Israelites, and he was born into bondage. But by the grace of God, he did not stay that way for very long. A terrible thing happened. The, um, the king of Egypt at the time that the Israelites were in bondage there, he, he made a decree. He said that all of the baby boys of one generation, they were going to get slain. They were going to be killed. For the purpose of the Israelites not getting strong enough to overthrow the Egyptians. Moses was saved from that fate. Moses was cast down the river. He was taken into the palace of Egypt. He was taken in as an adopted son into the hierarchy of the Egyptian courts. So he grew up pretty wealthy. He grew up in a good place. He grew up in a good home as the world might see it. But he grew up outside of the house of God. See, he grew up in what the world had to offer him. But then he left it. He had to. The story of Moses is one filled with strife, and it's filled with times where he might not have done what he should have been doing. He, he oftentimes, Moses would ask God questions. He'd say, no, nah, it's not me. I'm not the one. But Moses was led out into the wilderness one day as he was no longer in the palaces of Egypt. He'd, he'd been cast out for things that he'd done, for acts that he had committed. He was cast out into the wilderness, and he was tended to his father-in-law's sheep. And God came to him. 
by image of a burning bush. And it was not consumed by the fire. And this is what God had to say to Moses there. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. And I've heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up unto a land, and to a good land, and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey. God, through the time that the Israelites had been in bondage in Egypt, God had heard their prayers. He had heard them crying out, Deliver us from these people. And so God saw it fit to use a man to go up and be a representative of both the Israelites and God himself and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. But we see that there's a, there's a back and forth between God and between Moses here. Moses first says, you got the wrong guy. I don't know who you think you're talking to, but it ain't me. I ain't good enough. I've got a stammering tongue. I'm slow of speech. I don't know what I'm doing. These people, they don't like me. They're, those people want to kill me if I was ever to go back to them. God said, I'll send you with your brother. I'll bless your stammering tongue. And all those that sought to kill you, they're gone. They're dead. Go into Egypt. Do as I say. And I will deliver my people. Moses says, they won't believe me. They ain't going to believe a thing I said. If I come back to them and I say, well, God's come to me in a burning bush. I've seen this vision and we're going to get out of Egypt together. They're going to say, no, you haven't. Keep walking. Kick rocks. God said, say that I've sent you. I am has sent you. The God of their fathers, of Abraham and Joseph and Jacob. The God that they worshipped has come to deliver them. And that I have sent you and they will believe you. So Moses, through a little bit of, we'll say, coaxing, goes up to the Israelites and he goes out to the Egyptians and he says, God has said that we're going to be free to the Israelites. So he goes to the elders and he tells them what's going to happen and then he goes to Pharaoh and he says, God has commanded that you let my, his people, my people, go. Pharaoh didn't like that too much. He hardened his heart. And the Bible says that there were ten plagues that came to Pharaoh to over all of the Egyptians. But we're going to stop there for just a second because what we want to hone in on, just to give you a little backstory to what all of this is, we want to think about Moses and the man that he was in this moment. He was a man that really all he knew at this point in his life, he'd forgotten the things of Egypt. He'd left them. And now he's been brought into a place where he was tending to his father's sheep. He was a man that was out in the wilderness. He was out in the desert. He was trying to just gain his keep is all he was doing. But his brothers were back in bondage. His brothers were back under the bondage of the Egyptians doing work. Moses had already gained his freedom. Moses had already, it might not look like freedom of what we think it does, but he wasn't in bondage anymore. He was out in the wilderness and he was not under bondage. God did not come to Moses to free Moses. God came to Moses so that others through him might be freed. We are the doers of God's good work. By being obedient, by listening to what he has us to do, by working with him hand in hand, listening to his will and allowing him to work through us, God frees others. We're able to see communities. We're able to see states. We're able to see nations saved from the bondage that they're in. The difference is between then and now, we're not under the bondage of the Egyptians. And Moses doesn't come by way of one that was in the palaces of Egypt. Moses is a visage, if you will. He's, he's a forerunner of Christ, and not a Toyota forerunner. He's a forerunner in the sense of he came before Christ to show us a little bit about what Christ might be like. He's a depiction of what Christ will one day do. He's not Christ. He couldn't save them in the way that Christ could. But what Moses does is he goes into a place where a people are in bondage. Same as the Christ does. Same as Jesus does. What he does for us is he finds us in a place of bondage. In a place where we are tied down by our sins. 
by the things of this world, by the things that we have cast on ourselves, that we have been born into, that we have no hope out of, except someone come and bring us out of them. Moses did this for the Israelites. Christ does this for us. Where Moses had to go before Pharaoh, Christ went to death, hell, and the grave and said, you no longer have any hold on any that believe in me. Any man that comes unto me, no longer do you have any power over them. Their sins are washed away. And not just in part, but in whole. See, when Christ does a work, he does it completely. Whenever Moses came down into the Israelites to bring him out, he didn't just get a group of them together, the elders or maybe the younger ones that could make the journey and say, all right, you people come with me and the rest of you stay behind. No. He took all of them. When Christ takes our sins on himself, he doesn't just take a part of them. He doesn't just take the easy ones, we might say. All sins are equal in the eyes of God. He takes all of them. He died for all of them, to cover all of them. Sufficient. Covering every bit of it. There's nothing that we can hide from him. There's nothing that we can put in the back closet. We don't have to go into the, we don't have to go through our diaries back whenever we were younger and say, oh, yep, I remember this one. God, forgive me of that and go line by line. No. God covers them all from the same moment, the moment of salvation. What God did through Moses is he took a group of people that were broken and weary and broken down that were looking for someone to deliver them, and he did just that. He brought them out of this place, and he did not do it in a way that was easy. He did it in a way that was marvelous. He did it in a way that showed his power unto a group of people, not just the Israelites, but unto the Egyptians as well. Mercy was found that day. Mercy was found through God's work. God's work, see, it is our own actions that condemn us. It is not God that comes unto us and he says, Now, you've done too much because of what I've told you to do. No. He doesn't come unto us and say, You've done too much, here's nothing I can do. He's not like a doctor that comes into the room and he says, We've done all we can do, that's it. End of story. See someone else if you can. God comes unto us and he says, you haven't gone too far. There's not far enough that you could go to go too far. He says, come unto me and it'll all be washed clean. Come unto me and we'll change it all. Come unto me and find rest. He does not go into a group of people and say, nothing I can do. He says, let me work with you. He says, let me show you what I can do through you. He doesn't say, all right, now you've got your little part. You've been saved. You've been washed clean. Sit there and don't move. He says, come on. Let's get yoked up together. Let's do a good work. Let me show you what I can do through you. Those things that you have within yourself, those gifts, that singing, that ability to teach, that ability to lead. Let me show you what I can do with them. Let me show you what I've put down inside of you. Let me multiply it. God is not one that takes what little work we can do and sends us out on our own into the wilderness to see what we can do with it. No, He is a multiplier of good works. He takes what little we can do and amplifies it. He takes what little we can do and turns it into something great. There is nothing that we can do within us that would be of any good to this world. No, but through obedience to God, we can do many great works. What Christ tells us is, yes... You are a sinner. You know that. I know that. But he sits with sinners. He turns them into something more. He purifies them. He cleans them. He turns them into doers of great works. What he does is he takes a little man that might not be anywhere close to what we would call pious, what we would call good, what we would call great, a good man. We take, he takes a man that's walking down the street and we say, You avoid him. He's no good. You stay away from him. Kids, get over on the other side. You stay away from him. Because he's done it before. What he did was he took a man named Saul. He was a man that if he come walking down the street, you went to the other side. You didn't want nothing to do with him because he was a mean man. He was a persecutor of Christians. One who thought himself to be well with the Lord. He took a man named Saul walking down the street one day to Damascus, put him on his knees and turned him into one of the greatest writers that we have. 
into one of the, who, a man who wrote the greatest part of the New Testament, the better part of the New Testament, who took churches and said, this is what we need to be doing. Not we need to be going down the streets persecuting. We need to be, we need to be bringing people in through love. A man who was going around, who had letters in his hand at the time of his conversion to go seek and kill Christians. No, what he did was he turned around, he went to churches and he said, we need to be loving them in. We don't need to be going out into our enemies' houses and we need to be telling them, well, you need to do this, you need to do that, get on the floor and we need to, you need to submit to our will. No, we need to be going out and loving them, telling them about what Jesus can do for them because what Jesus can do is he can make a change. What Christ can do for us is he can make a change in our lives. It's what he's done from the very beginning to the very end. What his plan has been from the very beginning to the very end has been to make a change, not in just the lives of men, but in this very world that we have brought down into a sinful state. He doesn't want it to stay that way. He's trying to bring it back. He's looking for us to bring it back. What God wants, it's not God's will that any would perish, but that all would come into salvation, that all would find redemption through him. Through his good works, we can show the world that there is a better way. Through his good works, we can show the world that there is something greater. That a table has been prepared, a feast has been served, and that all are invited. That what this world has to offer will pass away like dust. Every time it has and it will again. But what God has to offer us is eternal. What God has to offer us is something that will never pass away. A little while back, whenever Tony mentioned I was here in Revival, and Dwayne, you preached on the wineskins one night, just for a little while, about how you couldn't put old, new wine into old bottles because they wouldn't expand. It was wineskins. Whenever God does a work in us, there has to be room for expansion. Whenever I was saved as a six-year-old little boy, I was just a little youngin'. And even now as a grown man... What God has put into me, I am not big enough to hold. God has put eternal life, a peace, and a grace that I cannot hold. He had to have a little room to expand. He had to have a little room to flow over. In one part, the Bible says that God's Spirit, whenever it comes into us, it's like a cup running over. It's like a well springing up that never runs dry. There has to be a little room for expansion. We've got to be okay with a little room to grow. We can't be rigid. We cannot be so set in our ways that we're not willing to expand for Him. He will come and He will, he will say to us, My son, my daughter, I love you. And the love that He has to offer is not one that we can experience other than by Him. The love that He has to offer us is not one that is small. It is not something that's here for a little while and then it fadeth away. It's not something that, it's not like love that we experience on this side. It's a love never ending, everlasting, eternal. A love so great it can redeem the sins of man. It can bring us back to Him. A love so great that man came and lived a perfect life. God sent His only Son. And that Son, who did not have to die, did die. In one of the most cruel and horrible ways. So that we might find life through Him. A lot of times we look at the cross and we see it as a sign of this Christian symbolism. We see it as a sign of... We, of course, see it as a sign of love. But if you look at it from a worldly perspective, those who do not know Christ, it is a horrible, terrible thing. It was a thing where eons ago it was almost perfected the way of a torturous death. Christ accepted that for you and for me. The reason that he accepted that is because he wanted us to come back to him. Our sins have brought us away from him and his death has brought us back to a place where we can be redeemed. Nothing short of, nothing more and nothing less. God has completed the work. God has done the work to bring you to a place of redemption this morning. If you do not know Him, everything has been completed. You have to come with nothing more than what you have with you right now. A broken heart and a contrite spirit. There is nothing more that is required of you to find salvation. There is nothing more that God asks of you than to simply be willing to accept the love that He gives freely. Everything else has already been done. And if you don't know, if you don't know what it's like to 
live a life with the Lord, if you don't know what it's like to have that peace, that grace in your life, just listen to what these kids were singing this morning. Look around at the faces that were crying as they were singing. Look around at the people that were, the broken hearts as their kids began to sing. Look around at the brethren that you see. Look around at the people that you love. And ask yourself, what do they have that I don't have that makes them so happy whenever they hear about this man being sung about, about this Jesus that I've not met yet? What about them makes them different? What about them puts them in a place where they're willing to go up and sing, where they're willing to sit aside a little time every week to just praise Him, to be with Him, to look after Him, to search for Him? What makes them so different? Don't ask what makes them so different. What makes Jesus so different that He's so important that we would set this time aside, that we would praise and worship and preach and find and seek to what He has to give us, what He has to offer us. What makes Him so different is He loves us us better than we could ever be loved with all power and all all dominion over the universe he could have chosen to do anything that he wanted with us and we would have been worthy of every torment that he decided but he didn't decide to do that he didn't decide to hate us he decided to love us back to grace he decided to love us to the cross it was his decision and his love that brings us back it was not anything that we deserved. It was not anything that we worked for. It was not anything that we could ever ask for except through Him. If He's asking that of you this morning, don't turn Him away. What He's offering you is better than anything this world has to offer. And you'll have to lay this world down short. That's fine. Believe me, you don't want it anymore. What it has to offer you is of no account whenever you've experienced the things of heaven. We just get a little taste on this side. We get a little bit of the happiness, the joy, the peace that he brings on the other side over here. But oh, one day, what we sang about, what you had them kids sing, I'll fly away. Glory, glory when I die. Hallelujah by and by. I'll fly away. We'll go to a place where there are no tears, there is no pain, and the ages will roll forever and ever with the one who has redeemed us and who has shown us a love before Him unknown to this world. Y'all come with a song. As they come around and as they're getting a song, think about where you are this morning. Think about where you sit. You sit in a good place. You sit in a place where you can come up to an altar. And this altar, we talk about this altar being open. This altar doesn't close because God's hours do not close. God's hours don't stop. He doesn't put a sign up on the door, out for lunch. No. You can always find God. Be it an altar, be it an altar that you've made, one that's been made for you. You can find Him wherever you're at. But this morning, you're in a good place to find the Lord. Come on. Go with me, stand. Isn't that great gospel songs and hymns? Blessed Savior, calling me a prince for me every day. Come to me a prince, come the long and tarry, I'm your noble Bring me every burden, bring me every care. Come to me, I Say amen. amen. I'm going to grab this so you can hear me. Um, our thought all week is to come in and come unto me. It's what we had all week. And I was like, Lord, it's youth service this Sunday. What are we going to do? Where are we going to go? What direction? 
And yesterday we was talking about Brother Brady, and I don't want to make it sound like we had this planned out, but we were talking about him and how much we enjoyed him being here and how proud we were of him for still walking the walk he's walking in his life. You see, when we were at Silver City, he was part of our youth group, and, and he was coming up through there. So I'd like to say I had a little bit of help in directing him some, but probably not much. But, but I'm not here to get myself credit for that. But the Lord kept saying, come, come unto me. And Matthew 11:28 28 says just what that song talks about. It says, come unto me, all ye who are labored and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This morning when I couldn't sleep, I was laying there scrolling through TikTok like all you do, right? Amen. But there was this pastor on there and he was talking. He said, imagine if we had to carry our sins on the outside of our bodies instead of down in here. You see, we carry it real well. We can hide. We can put on a facade. We can, we can look like everything's right in the world. You know, people go to Facebook and they look at your, your pictures and you're on vacation and you're doing this or you just bought a new car or you're painting the house or you've done something. You've had a new baby. The kids are doing great. They've excelled and everything's going perfect. When inside our own minds and inside our bodies, we're in turmoil. Anybody ever felt that way? Now imagine this, it's pretty tight in here today, is it not? I mean, there's, there's not a whole lot of room. I see people sitting in places they've, they've never sit in before. You're all moved around. You know what I like about that? All the jelly beans ain't separated into one little uh, color coordinated thing. They're all mixed up. But imagine today, imagine if you, you're here, you're a visitor, you're a first time, many times, whatever. But imagine if you had to fit your sin in between you and the person sitting next to you. If you had to physically like carry your sin and say, this, is, uh, th this, this here is uh, guilt, this is shame, this is my regrets and, and so on. This is my heartbreaks and this is my troubles. And, and then, well, you know what, I'm going to... My, my success is a lot smaller, so I'm just going to sit on that for a minute. But imagine if you physically had to walk in here today carrying that sin for everybody to see. You know what would have happened? A lot of you would have turned around at the door and not came in. Because guess what? If we had opened up both doors, you probably still couldn't have fit through the door. And I'm there too. I've got sin. But see, the people of, of, of bondage there, that sin was, they, they poured their hearts out to God every day, Brady. They poured it out. And, and you know why? They, they didn't have that sin when they went in uh, with, with Moses. They went to follow because they had given it to God. They had called him and said, God, just, just get us out of this bondage. God, we will do this for you, and God will do that for you. God, I promise, and, and God, tomorrow, if the day breaks and, and, and you don't send us someone, we will listen to anyone. They were so willing, they listened to a sheep herder who came and said, I am that I am, hath sent me. They listened to a man that the night before was in the field uh, looking after his father-in-law's sheep and seen a vision of a burning bush that was not consumed and the angel of the Lord spoke up to him and said, take off your shoes because you're standing on holy ground. Now if I come and told you that story this morning and told you I'd visited with the Lord last night, you'd all think I was crazy. But they were so willing to seek God, they listened to this man's story. And they said, we're going with you. This man just poured his heart out to you and told you all God wants you to do is come. He says, get up from that sin. Get up from that baggage. Get up from what's holding you down and come and accept something that will replace all that. You know, we preached last Sunday about going over into the promised land and when the spies went and searched it out. There was no need to search it. God had already told them what was there. But he wanted to hear a good report. I believe today God wants to hear a good report from you that I've searched out what I need to. And God, you're my choice. God, you're my choice. And I'm going to follow Jesus. You're my choice. I'm going to give you a little bit of what God moved us on to later in the week. And, and I'm just going to tell you this, and I'm going to let you wonder all week. You know, we ask so many times about what happened, what took place there at the, the tomb in the garden where the body of Jesus was laid. 
And I'm going to throw this out there to you, and you search this, and you know, what did he say to, to Peter there? He said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. Ain't that what he said? I want to tell you something. We ask all the time, who knows, who knows, who knows? Who knows what happened there when, when uh, they were delivered out of Pharaoh's bondage? The rock knows. Who knows what happened there when the water came forth from the rock? The rock knows. Who knows what happened there in the garden uh, when Jesus' body stepped out? The rock knows. Think about who the rock is this morning. Then I'm going to ask you this simple question. Who and what is the rock in your life? Who and what is the rock in your life this morning? Are you the one that's in bondage of sin just like those uh, uh, children there in Pharaoh's bondage? Are you in bondage of sin so much that you're crying out, God help me, God help me, God God send me somewhere that can feed me. I want you to know this morning you've been served the word of God and he said this, come unto me. God's give you the answer this morning. He said, come unto me. Sing another verse. This altar's open. The rock knows this morning. We're going to sing the fourth verse. Have you cares of business, cares of crossing men, cares of social love. anybody would have anything in any way. I'd like for you to remember Wayne and Faye Grant. Um, Sheila and Melvin is over there this morning helping with Faye. She's not doing well. Keep remembering her, praying for her. Remember the ones of those that lost loved ones this week, those that are struggling through. Um, we learned Friday, yesterday, um, Ed Lowe, a lot of y'all know him. His daughter's here with us today, but Ed had a stroke a week or so ago, and uh, he's living with Shelly now, and she's taking care of him. And he's doing therapy. What did you say, Shelly, two days a week? He's doing therapy two days a week. So any of you that have some spare time, call, give Ed some extra therapy. He loves to talk. He'll talk to you. <laughs> he's quiet now. <laughs> So uh, he'll have some stories to tell, I'm sure. But y'all remember Ed. And pray for him and his recovery. Keep praying for Sean. Keep praying for everybody else that's got doctor's appointments coming up, all those things. Anybody else, prayer request, anything before we dismiss? Ricky brought lollipops. Caroline has some kids. Come see Caroline. So. Yeah. And I got critiqued because I chose cotton candy. So she just didn't think that was mine. You heard what I said, right, Tina? Ricky brought lollipops. Okay, just making sure me and Caroline's clear on that. Um, right after church today, if you did not get a flyer for the couple's retreat, Kisa, do you have some more of those? Kisa has some of those. They're going to try to meet next Sunday after church and go over some of that, um, the details. That'll give you a whole week to study that. Also, right after church today, you got some. 
meet uh, Wednesday night. If you have something you want to do with Wednesday night, uh, trying to get four to each age group, please come meet Christy or Stephanie down front with our kid ministry. A lot of things are changing. Also immediately following church, those of you that are not in them groups, uh, positions, uh, we vote on these in three weeks. They go into effect 1st of September. So please, Gabe and Porky's going to be around. Some of the other deacons may be around. Come talk to them. If you have a position you want to keep it, simple conversation, come up, let them know you want to keep it. If you have a desire to take a position, please come talk to them. Let them know. There are some positions open and available, so please come see them. We have to vote on those the third Sunday of August. Um, also, tonight at 5 will be a deacons meeting. I asked all the deacons to be back at 5 o'clock tonight for that deacons meeting. Anything I've missed? Yeah, and I think we're ending that up with still some money in the bank for when it starts. So, That's lunches of love. So if you've been bringing stuff, now you don't have to go buy it. You can just make an online donation, and it'll store itself up for next year when we start for the summer months next year. Yeah, we was able to go out this last week with them. It was a lot of fun. One of the largest groups of youth I've seen. So, yeah, 6 through 12, the 9th and the 23rd. The 9th and 23rd for ages 6 through 12, 6th grade through 12th grade. Anyone else? I know that's a lot to take in. If you visited with us today, we love you. We appreciate you. We thank you for your offering today. We thank you for your love and your support of Harmony Baptist Church and uh, look forward to what God's going to do with us in this next year, school year. We'll be able to change some lives on Wednesday nights and be able to further the kingdom and further the cause of Christ. Um, anybody else? Also, if you we've got athletes in here that play. I think we've got a few in here that's on the football team. Their game's been moved to home this Friday night at 7.30. So come out and support that. Uh, the storm's messed up north for Southfield, and that's okay. Ours is fine. We're playing at home. So come support these kids, these athletes. In, I remember the family of Lynn Bottoms. He's not doing well. Anyone else? We love you. We appreciate you. Lift your hands towards heaven. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Remember all these different places you need to go. We need to get some of this stuff solved today. You're free to go.